Hello, this is Gary Hunter, and this uh, slide deck is really intended to introduce you to the negotiation module in the uh, uh, sales class, basically so that you've got some kind of overview of like how that module will go. But in particular, uh, the introduction is really centered on um, preparing you for uh, the role plays that we'll be doing during the class and to help you to kind of transition from uh, our prior work in the class to the negotiations block. The block includes a few learning objectives that we want to focus on. Uh, one is really to kind of uh, use the role plays as kind of an, a basis for experiential learning, where you kind of take on one of the roles, whether it's a buying role or a selling selling role. Uh, and in those roles, you'll get some experience at like how negotiation might work between buyers and sellers. Uh, to do the role plays, though, it's important to kind of understand some of the basic ground rules that are associated with that. Uh, and not only the ground rules about how to get into negotiations, but also to understand like how grading will work. So that's not a point of confusion for anyone. And then how the role plays themselves work, like how they'll actually work and how we'll fit those into our class time. Uh, then uh, what the idea of the video is, is basically to kind of set you up so you're prepared to do your first in-class uh, negotiation role play. As you might have already guessed, uh, negotiations, particularly role plays, are uh, really going to be the heart of how we learn how to negotiate. So by negotiating with someone else to reach some agreement, uh, which we'll call deals, right? Uh, or uh, And we'll use like deal sheets to capture those different agreements. Uh, you'll get some good insights into like how negotiations or how to negotiate and how to strengthen your own negotiation skills. Uh, you will uh, have an assigned role basically uh, on each one of these role plays and you'll bargain with it, someone else in the class and that's basically uh, I'll get into some details about how that will happen and how those assignments will go. But the intent of course is trying to arrive at some agreement uh, with that uh, other person who will have a different role from your role. Okay, so in professional sales a lot of times you will do some work uh, before you actually uh, go to on a sales call with a buyer. Uh, and in that uh, work, that's often kind of uh, associated with like, what do you want to say? What what uh, what solution do you want to pro propose? How are you going to discover and learn more about uh, the particular buyer? All of those kind of things are really akin to what would be called like a pre-sale planning stage. So that is before I make a sales call, I'm often kind of very engaged on the planning side. Then there's basically the sales call that happens, right? And that's really what the role play is, is, is like sort of that sales call. So one of the key things that to, alert, to start learning and getting in the habit of doing is that after a sales call, you want to reflect back on how well you perform. So use these negotiation role plays as an opportunity to kind of experience the sales call. Uh, and then after that call, think back about what did, you know, what did I do well in terms of preparation? Uh, where could I have improved my preparation? Did I have a good strategy when I went into that uh, negotiation role play? How did I do in terms of implementation? And what are some things that I could learn to improve my preparation strategy or implementation? Uh, also, like in each one of these role plays, you want to think about how, how do we get to some deal? And sometimes deals may not be the best option. You, uh, we'll learn as we get into the uh, block that sometimes no deal is better than a deal, but you want to kind of think about, you know, uh, how do you get to this deal sheet and the deal sheet should kind of reflect the outcome of your negotiation, what you and the, your partner, your assigned partner agreed to. When you're done with the, that, uh, with the role play, you'll actually use the deal sheet, uh, and the copies of each one of the role plays, uh, uh basically, um, combining all of that to get credit for uh, the negotiation exercise. So you'll turn those in. So you basically have three sheets, a deal sheet, your role play and your partner's role play and all that all kind of collect at the same time at the end of each role play exercise. Okay, so in sales negotiations, professional sales negotiations, one of the factors a lot of times that you're focused on is uh, not just uh, the outcomes that you get for uh, your organization for the seller, but also 
how uh, how well did you do at building a relationship uh, with the buyer or with your partner? So whether you're in the buying or the selling road role, uh, many uh, business to business relationships center on the notion that there's an important component and a relationship that's going to exist between uh, the agents who are representing the businesses. That is, the agents are the salesperson uh, on the seller side and the buyer uh, on the buying organization side, right? So we have both of those two agents and they're trying to build like good business relationships as well as good personal relationships. So one of the things that I may do after all the exercises are done is uh, ask you like how comfortable were you uh, in dealing uh, with the other individual? How comfortable would you be, for example, if you were the sales manager, how comfortable would you be in hiring them uh, if their role was really a one-time negotiation that is more of a transactional role? What, what if, on the other hand, that role was a relational role, which is common to most uh, professional sales jobs? If, you're, if they're actually trying to build a relationship, how comfortable would you be with having that person uh, in, in the role of building relationships for your organization and for your sales team? So essentially, you want to think about negotiations and why you're negotiating. Think about your behavior and the way you treat the other person as being kind of important uh, and recognize that those that behavior has consequences on their relationship. OK, so grading is often one of the issues. These all the role plays that we'll do in the class are what's called scorable role plays. So scorable role plays are, are like in sales, sales organizations a lot of times will have uh, quotas that individuals have to meet. So that's kind of a score. You're trying to score against the quota. Uh, in, in, these, in these role plays, there actually are kind of like good scores and bad scores, right? Like somebody's going to do really well in a role play and maybe somebody doesn't do so well in a particular role play. Uh, basically, whoever does the best, you're compared primarily to other people who are in the same role. So if you're in the buying role, you're only compared to other people who are doing the buying role. If you're in the selling role, you're only compared to other people who are doing the sales role. So if, if you just take the buyers, there's going to be some lowest score for the buyers uh, and there's going to be some high score for the buyers. So if you take whatever your score is, let's call that X, that's your raw score on, on that, and there's going to be some low, low score for that role. So if in a particular, if we, if we made the numbers kind of simple and in a particular role play, there was a range of scores uh, that let's say uh, went from a range of, let's say there were 100 points would be the high score that was attainable on that particular role play. Uh, and let's say the lowest score might be 20 points, right? So, uh, so that, that therefore the range on that is gonna be the high score minus the lowest score or 100 minus 20. So the, that basically gives you a range of 80, right? If the lowest score is 20 and your score is 40, for example, that would be 40 SX minus 20 is 20 over 80. So your score on that role play isn't really 40, it's 40 minus 20 divided by the range or 20 over 80 or one fourth, which would be like a 0.25. So 0.25, you know, 40 may not have sounded that great because 40 may not have been that great in a role play that has a range from 20 to 100 in terms of like the outcomes that people achieved. So the, uh, the scores aren't always going to be on like a 100 point scale. There's going to be a different number of points that are assigned and you'll see as we get into different role plays that varying that points makes it is part of the challenge of your pre-negotiation or pre-sale preparation. So kind of figuring out how do you prioritize uh, the different issues that you're negotiating. How do you prioritize what you're trying to accomplish uh, as you kind of go into the role? But it, uh, you, you, you could see from that example that there is going to be a high score and a low score. So as I stated, you know, if you said uh, the high score on a particular role was uh, 100 and the low score was 20, if your score is that high score, that means X would be 100 minus the low score is 20. So that ratio that you're looking at at the top of this uh, slide would show you as 80 over 80. So 80 over 80 is basically equal to one. That's the high score for anyone who did that role in that particular role play. The lowest score on the other, other, other hand, let's say your, your score was the low score, which would make X in that equation 20. So 20 minus the low score, which is 20, is basically going to be zero on the numerator. So no, no matter what the range is in terms of the de denominator, if you have the low score in the role, the low score is going to basically have a zero in terms of uh, your uh, Z score for that 
uh, particular role play, right? So that's that's basically going to show you as a zero. So uh, so you can get from zero to one. The scores are basically kind of scaled out on that zero to one uh, process. But the, that's not the worst you can do. The worst you can do is actually miss a case because if you miss a case and you don't actually participate in that case, then your score instead of being a zero will be a minus 0.5. Okay, so this is kind of the way it works. Whatever the lowest score is that you have in the role plays will be dropped. So if you miss one, that's, that ends up being what's dropped. If you miss more than one, then you basically are going to have like a minus 0.5 that's adding in. So there's a pretty strong penalty for like missing the cases. And it, yet there's going to be a pretty strong reward that I'll talk about in a little bit uh, for like actually completing the cases. So, uh, so you want to kind of remember what your points are and uh, what points you get out of a particular role play after you're done with that role play because you can check how you did. I'll basically give like the low score and the high score so that you can kind of see this is what uh, what score you should get. So your calculated score uh, in terms of that between zero and one, uh, you should be able to get from knowing the high score and the low score and your score, which is X in that raw score line. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. If not, you know, pause this, play it back, and uh, hopefully it'll make more sense as you kind of review that. And uh, as you see, like how these scores work, you should be able to kind of calculate what your score is. I like to tell students that you want to try to strive to kind of hang with the crowd, hang with the class. In my mind, hanging with the class is going to be somewhere around like scoring a 0.5. So that's, and I'll talk more about that on the next uh, slide. So throughout you know, your scoring and everything and grading throughout time, you haven't really kind of thought about things in terms of like percentiles and where am I? If you, you know, from your research class uh, you or your analytics class, marketing analytics or marketing research, you know that there are these percentiles, right? So you're kind of thinking about a 0.50. It's basically representing the 50th percentile. That means you're, you outperformed half the class and half the class outperformed you. So that's your basic kind of right in the middle. This is uh, basically, uh, 50th percentile. So like if you think about a, a score of 0.5 as being exactly in the middle of the class. Okay, over time what I've seen is the middle of the class often averages somewhere around, you know, 88, 89. That's kind of like the high B range. So that's going to be sort of in the B plus range or something like that. It's kind of where the class will fall out. So you kind of take that as being about where you are if you're staying at the 50th percentile. But keep in mind, you're going to drop your low score. So that's going to be the, the whole thing that you're trying to do. So after dropping your low score, then you're going to you can take the uh, take your grades and calculate um, basically where you are. So if you have like a 0.65 and above after calculating that, if you're getting 0.65s on every one of these, you've got a shot at what we're going to call the beast of bargaining. The beast of bargaining is basically like the best negotiator in the class, at least the person who scored best on the role plays in the class. So uh, much as we had a pitch champion earlier, we'll have a beast of bargaining. So the beast of bargaining has to do all the role plays and whatever the highest average is on those role plays, uh, is basically going to be called your beast of bargaining and that's going to basically max out at like 100 percent on the negotiation role play okay so if you're in the range of like 0.65 and higher though you're looking at a really good grade you know 95 percent or so if you're in the range of like 0.45 to 0.64 that's kind of the range where you're going to see like in the middle of that is about where the b is right that's about an 88 percent so remember i was talking about 0.5 kind of works out to be about uh, you know, about the, the, the uh, B range, right? That's a high B range, right? So you want to be, so if you're getting like above 0.5s and stuff like that all the time, you're probably going to end up around the A range, right? So that's kind of where you'd come out. If you're in the 0.25 to 0.44 range, then that's going to be somewhere around the C, right? That's, uh, uh, that's kind of getting lower in the class. If you're 0.05 to 0.24, that's in the D range. If you're less than 0.05, that's basically kind of in the F range. So you're really kind of struggling on negotiation. But here's the reward for experiential learning. And this is kind of what I was trying to get at. The reward for experiential learning, that is if you experiment or if you experience each one of these role plays, you basically participate in all the negotiations. You don't miss a class. You don't miss a role play. Your lowest possible score will be 85%. I, you know, I, I totally believe that negotiation and selling and leadership and a lot of these social skills and, uh, that you're working on uh, during your college years and, and beyond are learned by doing. So if you, uh, this is really kind of focusing on the notion that you learn by doing. So the more you, you do these, the better you'll get. 
so if you do all four of them, even if you're average, if, you're, if you get the low score on all four of the exercises, that, or all five of the exercises, let's say we do five, four or five role plays, if you do all the role plays that we do in the class, then you're basically going to be sitting at an 85%. It's your lowest score. I'm going to give you that 85%, even if you average up like zero, which would be a failing grade in, you know, quote, the real world or in terms of sales quotas. But for the class, I want you to just experience them and, and uh, focus more on trying to learn and develop your skills and your negotiation process uh, instead of worrying too much about your grade. This is your opportunity to kind of learn. And I want to create a good positive environment around negotiation and the grading process. Uh, you know, grades have to be assigned, unfortunately, uh, but you can do really well in the class by simply participating. Okay, so in terms of like other like rules and process things, right? If you're late for class, then you don't get to negotiate. The reason I say that is because a lot of times the negotiation, we may start a negotiation, uh, particularly uh, this semester at the very beginning of class, right? So there, uh, there are gonna be some opportunities where you literally start the class with a negotiation. So if you're late, I've already handed out the class and you're, you're basically, you didn't get a chance. I've already kind of done some of the pairings and I've tried to figure out who's there and who's not. So you don't want to be late for the negotiation classes. It's really important to be in, in, on time for those, right? Uh, if you don't show up at all, you know, basically not, not negotiating. If you basically come to class, but you don't negotiate, you can't get a score. Uh, so uh, that uh, that's actually better than like not showing up at all, because if you don't show up at all, then that's a negative 0.5. So uh, basically if you're late and you don't get a chance to negotiate, you'll either uh, be put in an observer role. And there may be some cases where we have to put you in an observer role anyway, based on just an unequal number of pairings and stuff. But if you're in an observer role, you basically will get a positive 0.5. So that's basically kind of putting you right at the right at the middle of, of that uh, whole distribution process. If you're late, you basically get the low score, which is going to be the you, you get you tie for zero or whatever, right, for that case. And you then you'll still kind of work in a more of an observing role. You get a chance to kind of watch some other people negotiate because it's just kind of hard to fit you into the exercise once the class has already started. Okay, so here's a, another big rule. Like you can't talk about the points. In some cases, you're going to be given like points that you earn uh, for accomplishing different things in the role that you're assigned. So you can't actually talk about those specific points uh, that you're getting and then share the other person shares their points because then it just becomes like an exercise in math and like, you know, your other classes are teaching you math. This class is focused on more of the soft skill. So focus on trying to argue the merits of the case itself, right? Uh, focus on the merits of the case, focus on the merits of what you're trying to accomplish, focus on the merits of the solution that you're trying to propose, right? This is kind of the idea that you want to sell uh, and focus on that uh, solution and its merits instead of uh, trying to kind of, instead of sharing points. If you share the points, that again puts you the same as like missing the whole thing. That's actually, in some ways, it's worse than missing it. That's a negative 0.5 is basically how, how that ends up getting scored. So don't share your points, keep those confidential. Uh, and that will make more sense as we get into the role plays in terms of what I'm, I'm talking about there. At the very beginning of the negotiation, then you'll basically have a uh, you'll have your case and you want to read the information very carefully and then think about what strategy you want to use. Like what is it that makes the your goals make sense? Like, you know, you're going to be given kind of what do you, uh, you know, a situation uh, and you've got to figure out what you want to make happen during the negotiation. What are you trying to accomplish? Uh, you can only use the information in the case, so just use the information that's there and don't make up material facts, right? So you can't make up these facts that don't make sense, you know, like you can't make up a fact about something like, uh, you know, uh, the car I've got is like, you know, got some kind of secret uh, unknown uh, gold in the back and the gold bullion is worth like billions of dollars more than the car itself. You can't make up stuff like that. You, uh, you can like uh, make your story work like this is what you're trying to accomplish so you can kind of uh, put things together that makes your story and makes your situation make sense to the buyer or to the seller right and that's kind of what you're trying to do in the strategy uh, so that uh, you can uh, do that prior to the negotiation and then keep in mind of course you, if you uh, we're going to talk about the role plays after they're done so whoever you negotiate with your negotiating partner is going to know if you ended up lying to them because when we talk about the cases they're going to know okay well you know this guy actually lied to me or that person lied to me 
uh, and that could hurt you then uh, if we do these relationship uh, or peer evaluations at the end of the negotiation role play. So you want to keep a positive ethical behavior when you negotiate and be very professional in the way you uh, work with one another. Okay, so, so the way it will actually work is at the very beginning, the very first negotiation role play we do, you'll be assigned a negotiation ID, and that's going to be an alpha numeric number, which it could be something like Bravo 7 or Y12 <clears throat> or any number like B1 through B15 or Y1 through Y15. And that becomes your negotiation ID for the remainder of the class. Uh, so you're going to want to <clears throat> remember that negotiation ID and put that negotiation ID and your name on, on your role play sheet as soon as you get it and on your deal sheet. And that's basically kind of how I can account for your participation and stuff in the role play. And you'll always turn those in. So you basically are gonna turn the role plays in at the end of the exercise with your name and your role, your negotiation ID on it. Uh, the partners are gonna be randomized. So you're gonna get a chance to negotiate with people to negotiate in different ways and see a variety of different people and different styles and the way they go, go about things. And keep in mind, you're not negotiating against that partner. You're negotiating, your, your, or your grades anyway, or versus other people who are in the same role that you're in, right? So it's kind of more about, you know, your, your, you know, sometimes you need to work together with your negotiation partner to achieve better outcomes. So uh, you want to uh, work through that. And that's the reason that's done that way is because if your role is actually tougher than the other person's role, uh, you're not really scored against the other person. You're just scored against other people who have that same, you know, tough role. Okay, so uh, you'll, you'll have some time. That time's going to be limited on how much time you have to prepare for the negotiation. Then the negotiation itself will have some time that's limited. So you basically will kind of negotiate. Uh, you'll have some pre-negotiation time to get ready for the negotiation. Then you'll have some time to execute the negotiation. Then, uh, you know, depending on when it is in the class, then we'll discuss the negotiation after that's completed. So you only negotiate with the assigned partner and you complete the deal sheet just with your assigned partner, right? And then you turn in again the deal sheet and then your role play and your partner's role play. And that becomes a whole that set of like three sheets, often of different colors. You know, sometimes you'll have a yellow color, a blue color and a pink color, for example. You'll turn all three of those sheets in at the end of your negotiation. Okay, a quick note on like not sharing information from the cases. You don't want to talk to people outside the class ever, you know, particularly like people who are also taking the class this semester and the, uh, those kind of things. Uh, and you don't want to share too much like through your fraternities or sororities or whatever in terms of like uh, down the road or, or, or uh, with people who are in the class at a different time or those kind of things. Because if you share the information, then it basically spoils the experiential learning that someone else is going to get, right? So uh, it, you know, the whole idea is experiential learning and learning by doing and, you know, go, uh, going through that, there's no substitute for actually that experience uh, and kind of actually doing the role as it's set up. You don't want to divulge any confidential role information uh, to anyone uh, in the class, right? Because basically that's that would be like a breach of Clemson's student code of conduct. And we all know that part of what makes Clemson special is our code of conduct and the way we interact and work with one another. So. This is a big kind of go Tigers moment and just kind of uh, learn to appreciate uh, the student code as we know and understand it, right? Hey, good luck with your bargaining. Uh, and basically uh, think about this uh, module of negotiations is something that we're going to basically all get better together. Uh, it's you're, we're basically practicing a skill that's so vital and fundamental to professional sales uh, that we all want to kind of refine these and sharpen these and practice these. And if you go into sales roles or sales jobs, you'll have to kind of practice with other people who are in sales and you learn so much uh, through those uh, experiential role plays that you do. Uh, both, uh, you know, here in class and beyond if you go into those different sales roles. And keep in mind, 70% of all Clemson marketing majors go in to start with sales roles. And they may not stay in those. You may move from that to something else. Uh, but negotiations is probably going to be a part of whatever role you do because negotiations, as Pink has taught us through all the stuff that we've read, everybody's in sales. And this negotiation part is like really kind of at the core of, of uh, selling. So you have to negotiate whatever role you end up in. So we negotiate anytime there's some conflict or some difference of opinion between what we're trying to achieve and what someone else is trying to achieve. So learn to negotiate, refine those skills, 
Uh, and just as you did with the pitch exercise, which hopefully many of you have done with the pitches to take it out and practice with, you know, uh, career fairs and uh, visitors to campus and guest speakers and you pitch them on your skills and stuff like that. You know what value propositions are and how to how to put that uh, into a very concise message. So hopefully you got really good with the pitch and you're going to get really good with negotiations. And these are going to be two really fundamental skills that you'll use, whether you're whether you go into professional sales or not. But uh, they definitely are at the core of professional selling. So thanks. Uh, enjoy the negotiations role model and uh, let's have fun and uh, start these negotiations uh, as soon as we can. Good luck.